I'm uh, Quint Lucas, the mayor of Kansas City. Uh, we are here today uh, because something happened last night that marred what was an exciting night, a euphoric night for the people of Kansas City. We had a shooting of a number of individuals last night, including fatalities. Uh, what I'm here to start with today is to say the following. First of all, this city will never stand up for this type of gun violence. We will continue to try to stop it before it starts, and we'll make sure that in any investigation, we're bringing folks to justice. In connection with last night, our chief of police, Richard Smith, will share further details with you about the incident, what we're able to share with you now. Uh, I will just say a few things. First of all, um, we've got a problem in Kansas City. We've said a few times that it is an epidemic of gun violence. We're losing too many lives. We have too many people shot each year. We will remain committed both at City Hall, at the police department, at every agency in Kansas City in making sure that we stop this problem. I also want to thank the men and women of law enforcement, both the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department, as well as a number of partner agencies, the Independence Police Department, Blue Springs Police Department, the Jackson County Sheriff's Office, the Clay County Sheriff's Office for their cooperation. So what we'll do now is get further details and information from Chief Smith, and Chief Smith and I will stick around for extra questions for you. Chief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, last night at 1127, we got our first call um, that there was a problem at the club. Um, let me go into a little detail beforehand. Uh, last week at the crime meeting, we talked about a chief's victory in our city and for our officers to do proactive checks on our entertainment um, areas. Um, this club had come up previously. Um, we knew it was an issue at some other points uh, of time in the past. Um, officers had done a check of the parking lot and were less than a minute out when we received our first call. So we had just been there. Um, I have um, some questions that have been submitted. I'm going to run through them real quick and then take some questions. Um, we had 15 injured. Um, we are still working on what the extent of those injuries are, um, whether they're all gunshot wounds or other injuries, but we had 15 injured at area hospitals. Um, uh, we were asked, did anyone besides a security guard and suspect fire a weapon? Not to our knowledge. There was police officers did not fire any shots at the scene. The only shots that we know were fired but were between the suspect and the security guard. The security guard is the one who engaged the suspect. Um, there was a disturbance in the club. We know after several minutes after, or outside the club in a line waiting to get in, we know this incident unraveled uh, shortly after that disturbance. We don't know the extent of what the disturbance had or why it was there. Um, shortly after that, this is when the uh, gunfire started and the security guard was inside the club and heard commotion. We don't even know at this time if the security guard understood what was going on outside. He just went outside and that's when he confronted the suspect. Uh, we were the shooting victims targeted at random. At this time, we do not have a motive for why the shooting took place. So we do not, we're not sure if this is random, if there was someone in the crowd specific he was upset at. Um, we've heard several theories that have been on social media about people cutting in line, that sort of thing. I will tell you that no statement has been made to the police department as to an exact reason why this shooting took place. So I know there's several theories out there on social media, not sure if any of them are true yet. Um, I would like to mention at, at the time of the incident, we put out a, a citywide assist. All available officers in the city of Kansas City, plus our neighboring partners, made this scene. We think there was well over 50 officers at this scene as it unfolded. I will tell you the officers acted. Um, they did a great job last night. This was very chaotic. We had hundreds of people fleeing, both in cars, on foot, all kinds of things last night. It was, it was a very uh, intense scene, to say the least. Uh, I, I can't thank the outside agencies enough for their assistance. Even while we were there, some of the outside agencies actually helped us with our calls that were happening inside our city. Um, so great cooperation and very thankful to have that last night. Um, we were asked about personal items from the scene, if anyone was there, and they think that we have possession of their personal items, just contact our homicide unit and we'll get that worked out. 
Um, we also wanted to tell you that we reached out to both the um, suspect's family and the victim, female victim from the scene. Um, we as a police department reached out with our social services. We've offered both of them any assistance um, that they may require at this time. We will also be following up with the victims as we can who are in the hospital with our social services. That's all I have. I think I answered most of the questions that were submitted, if anyone. We don't, we haven't spoken to all of them yet. And we don't even know if 15 is definitive, okay? We, we had several people come out in the hospital and say they were injured. We don't know if they're related to this scene and not telling us or what. So we're, we're doing the best we can with the information we have. You mentioned he had other calls at this establishment. Can you tell us the nature of the calls and how many times you've been there or when you were arrested? I don't have the exact number. Um, we talked about it last week in the crime meeting. We'd had a drive-by shooting in the lot in the past. Um, so we knew we had that. We have had reports of other people um, saying that in incidents occurred at this club, but we did not engage them at the club. It was at a hospital or someplace else, and they said that was an incident that stemmed from this club. That drive-by shooting you mentioned that was a week ago? That was last Monday? Uh, I believe so. I, we had the date upstairs. I didn't bring it down with me, Sam. So sorry. Yes, about a week ago. What else, or Mr. Mayor, what else do you know about this club? I mean, uh, their fellow merchants were saying... Uh, that it's, uh, I mean, they refer to it as a, as a nuisance. Do we know anything else about it? The club, what else is happening? So through our city regulated industries office, uh, we frequently inspect clubs. We understand that any business in Kansas City has due process rights, but we also understand that people of this community have a right to be safe. So we're expecting that tomorrow our regulated industries director, Jim Reddy, our assistant, our acting city manager, uh, city leadership will look at this club, uh, will consider whether it is a nuisance, if it meets those standards, and then we have remedies up to and including temporary revocation of the license, and then the club would have the opportunity for notice and a hearing thereafter. But um, we have dealt with these sorts of issues before with clubs that are consistent uh, nuisance creators in our community. A nuisance ranges uh, between a number of different things, but that includes violent crime that uses city resources, police resources consistently. And that's another tool that we have in, I believe, fighting violent crime and addressing this issue long term. You said last night we came from a chief when the city was in a great mood and this happens. Talk about how frustrated you were, especially during this time. It's supposed to be a great time for the city. Um incredibly, incredibly frustrated. I mean, uh, last night was a, a night that a lot of people have been dreaming of in Kansas City for 50 years. And uh, while we won't necessarily say that folks aren't still happy, uh, this is very disappointing for us. It's heartbreaking for a number of families, not just the families of uh, the victim who was killed, but also the family of families of many others today. And that's why I really want to emphasize one thing that the chief of police said, and it's this. Uh, the department, our city, stand ready to assist with any resources we can to victims, to people who know what happened. Uh, we want to work with you. We want to provide any number of services to help support folks through this. Um, we don't need to keep having disappointments like this. It wasn't long ago that right across the state line there was another bar shooting uh, with lots of victims, um, a number of fatalities, and this can't be something that us as a region can get used to every quarter every few months. Uh, I don't like us assembling in this room, whether it be our room, whether it be a room across the line, and there's too much of this in Kansas City. So that's why, to Sam's question, we will make sure that the bar uh, won't continue to be a nuisance long term. We'll also make sure that we investigate as much as possible. I will say this, you know, there's a lot that's circulating right now on social media. There are a lot of folks that claim to be in the know of what's happened. Uh, please call us. Please talk to us. Um, call law enforcement. Everybody, I grew up in the inner city. Everybody's tired of this. Everybody's tired of these sorts of situations. Everybody's tired of these incidents. Let's make a stop to them. And the way to stop them isn't just the people that are standing behind me and next to me. It's also all of us in a community saying, we're not going to stand for this. We know something that's going on. We know somebody who's planning retaliation. That's the sort of thing that we need to intervene with now. And that's the only way we stop problems like this long term. Chief, what do you tell us about the suspects? Uh, you mentioned, Chief, that um, you know, he's one of the two individuals who 
died, correct? Correct. Can you, can you give us uh, a name or any past criminal history at this point? Jaron Swift, J-A-H-R-O-N Swift, 29 years old. Can't see Missouri resident. Undetermined at this time. Can you clarify the, the number of security guards on scene last night? Do you know how many were there? Undetermined. Do you know uh, if they had enough security there last night? Uh, undetermined. With the security that was there, was it the off duty officer working security? It was not off duty officers, it was private security. Okay. Were they licensed? Uh, I, we believe I. Um, he was a member, uh, they're uh, uh, issued through our private officers commission, so he has a commission card to us. And you mentioned planning, um, I think um, a lot of people want to know, what does this mean if the chief skewed when the Super Bowl there still should be a lot of planning that's been in the works sure. that has happened, and how does this possibly change those plans or increase maybe? Right. I, I, I understand people would be concerned. I, I want people to know that this police department has been working on a plan for the better part of a month. We've started. We've started having meetings. Um, if, if we are so lucky that we have further events here in Kansas City, I want people to know that this police department will have the resources necessary to protect the citizens if they come out and enjoy themselves and have a wonderful day. Chief, I want to ask you specifically about resources because we've reported over the last several years up until recently I know this is probably not, it's definitely not the entire part of the answer, but how important is it to have more police officers out there patrolling on the streets than what we had previously? I think it will make a difference. I mean, let's let's face it. I, we could have 20,000 cops. And most of these incidents we're seeing, we were there a minute before. Um, several of the other high-profile shootings in Kansas City, Westport, some of the other clubs that we've had, officers were standing within... 25 yards of all the shootings, and the shooting still occurred. Um, so I, I'm not saying that an officer on every street corner is the answer to every issue. Do I feel like we should use some more officers? Yes. And, and you know, we're in talks with the mayor about that and how we increase the strength and where it'd be appropriate and how to, how to use those resources if we get them. So, yes, the, we are pushing for that. Gene Peters Baker wrote on the record, I believe, the Star the other day, saying that uh, she was disappointed that they decided to. Come back on Nova. Um, what about that? Uh, your yeah, I, 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 my take on it is a little different. I think Nova needed to evolve. We had a really good year with Nova, and then every subsequent year, homicides went up. I mean, there's a certain point you got to evaluate things, and what we did is bring in an outside assessor who evaluated it and said, hey, you should probably shift to this to individuals rather than groups. Um, we listened to those experts, and that's what we did. So I, I look at more as Nova is evolving and is trying to do the right things. Can you talk about what it was like before that this happened, your officers kind of going by, talk about how many officers had come by the cars, kind of what they had seen? I, I they had been there and everything was quiet. I know there was three supervisors, that three sergeants that made a swing through the lot and at various stages were leaving. The last one left about a minute prior to the shooting. You know, everybody says, you know, we're not going to tolerate this anymore. We've got to do something about it. But here we are again. Yeah. I mean, every single time we do that. How do you fix this problem? I mean, honestly, when we could do, you know, what you said, Mr. Mayor, is great. Um, but that's not going to happen tomorrow. Like, people in Kansas City are scared. I think they are okay. Um, some of the answer is what you just heard, right? It's 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 reevaluating every tool that we have. It's reevaluating things like Nova. I would take your question a slightly different way, and instead of saying that the department in any way has rejected any plans or the city has rejected anything, we are trying to be as creative as possible every single day. These are folks that spend their lives, their their whole days, thinking about ways to make this community safer. So I understand that people are concerned. That's that's why I made my call before uh, to say that there were hundreds of people in this club, right? There are lots of people that know what's going on in lots of these incidents every day. And what we have to recognize is that it is not just going to be law enforcement alone that solves our problem. It's going to have to be more of us. It's going to have to be all of us. But to your point, yeah, we hear this a lot. Um, I get that. 
Uh, that's why every day that since I've been in office, including my second day in office, in this very room, I think you were here too, um, talking about how we won't tolerate these sorts of issues. We need to make sure that we make a, a big deal of it, because it is a huge deal. There is, there is a, a, a woman who has lost her life now. Um, there is someone who is burying a child who was just out celebrating, and we want to make sure that we don't have more of this. And I will say this to the chief's point. He's absolutely right. We have officers close to lots of these incidents. We have folks that are around that are inspecting areas that are going all around the city to see what's going on. But we also need to make sure that we're catching assailants. We have to make sure that they're being prosecuted. We have to make sure that they're serving real sentences. We have to make sure that there are people that are not going around this city operating with impunity and thinking that they will never get caught, that they can open fire on peaceful groups of people. We have too much of that in Kansas City, and it's those types of people, those types of suspects, that sort of retaliation, which I know this department's trying to address, and that's the sort of thing that we're making sure we will not tolerate long term. So, you know, what I might say, everybody wants kind of a, a magic answer. We don't have that today. What I will say is this. I bumped into the chief last week in Jefferson City. We were both walking around the corridors of the state capitol, and that's not because we love visiting the state capitol. Capital. God bless him. It's because we actually want to make some sort of difference. It's because we were visiting with the governor. We're visiting with everybody who's involved. And that's why we're saying we care about this today to help eliminate situations like this in Kansas City in the future. Can you talk about this, that culture of silence? You know, there's $25,000 rewards for, you know, solid conduct. Can you talk about the culture of silence? So I'll, I'll disagree with the premise. I think we have had more people talking. I think the reward is yielding results. We have solved crimes. We have solved homicides. Um, we want to solve all of them, of course. But here's the thing. Not every single thing is going to solve everything that we have. We have to change. We may come up with the best answer for 2020, but by 2022, folks are doing something different. Every important thing that we deal with in government, be it education, be it crime, be it health care, right, changes and needs to adapt. And I think what you've seen from us in Kansas City, and we've done a lot of things lately, the $25,000 reward, different gun ordinances, all types of efforts we're making for witness protection funds throughout our state, throughout our community. These are all steps to making people feel safer in our community, making sure that we can solve crimes, and making sure we can get criminal elements off the streets. The folks, uh, the type of person who would shoot up a bunch of people outside of a bar is a menace. And we want to make sure we're catching menaces like those, that we're able to prosecute them, we're able to get them off the streets before they offend once again. Mr. Mayor, you mentioned going to Jefferson City, uh, and you said earlier today, I believe on our air, that you met with uh, Governor Carter and and you just gave a statement saying that they would Yes. And I guess there's going to be We want to be smart with every resource we have. This is one thing I'll say, and I won't have anybody else say, but we spend a lot of money in what I like to call our anti-crime industrial complex, which I'm not talking about the police, I'm not talking about the prosecutors, I'm talking about a lot of organizations that have gotten funds for decades, for the majority of my life, and we need to make sure that we're actually being productive with what we're doing. They need to be uh, agile in the same way that you ask our law enforcement to be agile, in the same way that you ask for our leaders to be agile, and that's the sort of thing that I'd like to see us focus on. A chat I had with the governor a few months ago was this. He said, you know, maybe we can find resources. Maybe we can find money for counseling, anything like that. We want to make sure it's being spent well, that it's being spent to make a difference on crime in Missouri. And so that's the exact sort of work we're trying to do. That's why we have folks that come assess the types of programs that we have each day. And that's the work we'll continue doing. Chief, I have a question for you. Are you familiar with the suspect? And are you looking to see if this is gang related? Uh, no indication. Um, I don't believe the suspect was on like a, our radar for anything in particular. No. Chief, what can you say about the actions of the security guard? Uh, I mean, it appears that he saved lives. Um, we know that there was multiple firearms involved. Um, that, um, so we think the security guard's actions definitely saved lives. Can you clarify that? The multiple firearms? Yeah, we're still investigating. We're still we're still tearing it apart, but we know there's multiple firearms involved. So the suspect. Had yes. Do you think there's a possibility that this is two people shooting? No, there's no indication of that. What can you tell us about the female? Yes, sorry. Hang on one sec.
The female victim is 25-year-old Raven Parks. Um, I, not that I know of. I, I'm, uh, there was one incident in Westport that I'm aware of um, um, that stemmed from in Westport, went somewhere else, or may have been shots fired on, no one hit. Um, but that's the only other one I know of. I, undetermined. Is there video from last night surveillance? Uh, do you know, John? I, we have not found any yet. I, I, I think there's a lot of cell phone out there, if, if someone has video, we would love it if they share it with us. I mean, there was hundreds of people there. Um, but again, to the mayor's point, we get very few calls, right? We get very few calls about what happened out there. I mean, we have to go digging to get this information. It does not openly come to us. And, and to your point, that's what needs to change, right? People have got to take a different tact about this. Otherwise, we're going to have the same results. But as I've said before, it's, some, it, it's a culture of violence, and we have to stop that. We have to change the trend that it's okay to engage in this kind of behavior. And then it's an okay to not say when someone does something wrong. That's not okay. What would you say to many people who will be out in two, less than two weeks to watch this year? at many of these clubs, hopefully celebrating. What do you say as they watch this and maybe worry about you know? Their kids yeah, I think we're going to learn some lessons on this. Obviously, we have a place we need to address where we know we've had um, prior instances. We, we will be addressing that in the coming days. I, I think we will make sure that we have the proper staffing. We, we were overstaffed last night. We had held people over. We had specialized units working. I mean, we were very much out and about in this city trying to make sure everyone had a wonderful time. I mean, think of the guests that we had in our city um, for the game from other cities across the country. I mean, we we want to roll out the red carpet. We want Kansas City to be that place that they want to come to, that they enjoy, that they had a great time at. Um, and, and this is the, the, what I'm saying to them, again, is the violent crime Achilles heel keeps coming up time and time again. And I, I can tell you, the police department, you could give us 5,000 people. We can't change the dynamics of someone's thought, right? That's not what we do. What we need to do is everyone take an ownership in this game. It's our city, all of ours, the media, the police department. We all live here. What can we do to make it better? And what real efforts can we make to send a different tone, different message? Did you did you recover the weapon? Yes, we recovered. Well, can you tell us about it? Uh, it, it was it legally registered? It I, stolen? Do you know what you had? It, we're, no. We're brand, I mean, we haven't even talked to all the victims yet. There's a lot to be done on this case that is going to unfold in the coming weeks. But, you know, since uh, our suspect is not alive, we, we, we're not pursuing a case fall on it. Some of those things will go less, and we'll get to our victims, witnesses first, in that order. What is the club owner told, told you in the situation? Was he there last night? He was. He was there. And what has he told you? Uh, he didn't say much to me. Is he being cooperative? Uh, I believe so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I believe he is being cooperative. And, Mr. Mayor, maybe what would you say to him going forward to talk about this, this idea that you're going to Say to the governor. No, to the club owner. Oh, to the club owner. Um, you need to make sure people stay safe. Um, in the same way that we're talking about what law enforcement, what mayors, what everyone else can do, I think it is a responsibility of every club owner in this city uh, to make sure that they have a safe environment, that they're part of, of fixing those problems. I think when you have hundreds of people who are there, uh, it, it might be reasonable that the club owner learns something about what's going on too, or somebody tipped them off. Work with us. I want every club owner in this city to work with us to make sure we avoid tragedies like this, to make sure we know the fights that are coming, to make sure that they tip us off to what's going on. That's the sort of thing that I would ask for them, and I think that's only fair in this city because everyone wants to be safer. Was it enough for him to have an security guard in there? We always think about law and regulation in this city, and we'll continue to do so. Uh, at this point, as the chief said, we're going to evaluate this situation uh, from our lawmaking side as well. So that's what we have. Thank you all for being here today.